Well, here we go with lesson 27. Let's wrap up section 8.2, the law of cosines. So we're going to have some application problems, and I'm going to give you a little bit of help with some of the more complicated um, homework problems. I'm just going to give you some hints on how to get going on them, and hopefully we can knock this out. I think the caption says it all, why women live longer than men. Uh, I'm sure his family is very proud of the work he's doing. just thought that was a funny slide. Well, let's remember what the law of cosine says. Uh, and again, these, these 1, 2, and 3 are really the same law of cosines. I've, I've just given them to you for all three sides of the triangle. This formula is given to you in the formula sheet, although it's one of those really tough ones not to, not to be able to memorize. So we're going to be using law of cosines today. Well, we've got one problem. We're only going to use law of sine. Here we go. Well, we are going to do the airplane problems again, and we're also going to be doing the ship problems. I'll do an airplane problem for you. Uh, the nice thing is we're only going to say approximately how far the airplane is from A. So we're going to set this thing up. We only want to get the distance back. We're not going to ask for the direction back, although it wouldn't be that hard to calculate. We simply don't ask for it. The other nice thing is we tell you how many miles each leg is. You don't have to calculate it. So let's set it up. So the airplane flies 200 miles from point A in the direction of 40 degrees. Remember, these are all coming from the north. And then flies in the direction of 100 degrees for 300 miles. And again, that 100 degrees is coming from the north. And approximately how far is the airplane from A? So we have the 200 miles, and we have the 300 miles, and we have the 40 degrees, and we have the 100 degrees. So the first thing we got to figure out is what's the angle between our two legs? Well, the 40 degree uh, angle part of it is because two parallel lines cut by a transversal, 40 degrees on both sides. And the 80 degree part is the fact that from due north to due south is 180 degrees. So if we go 100 degrees, then there's only 80 degrees left over. And so we add those together, and the angle between the two legs is 120 degrees. Now we're off and running with the law of cosines. So x squared equals 200 squared plus 300 squared minus 2 times 200 times 300 times cosine 120 degrees. And you can work right to left. The cosine of 120 degrees is negative 0.5. You can just do it any way you want to. You're going to end up with the distance between uh, from where we're at to where we started to be 400 and you know, pretty much 36 miles. That's it. That's all we're going to ask. We could get the angle back. We're, just, we're simply not going to ask for it. So for the train, pro not train, for the ship problems and for the for the airplane problems, you'll only have to get the distance back, and you're going to find the angle between the two vectors. You're going to calculate if you have to the length of each vector, and then you'll do law of cosines. Let's move on. Well, let's do a landscaping problem. Pat needs to determine the height of a tree before cutting it down to make sure it will not fall on a nearby fence. The angle of elevation of the tree from one position on the flight path is 30 degrees and from the second position 40 feet farther along the path it's 20 degrees. Find the height of the tree. Let's draw it out. Well this should look a little familiar. This is really the two triangles uh, problem, triangle inside of a triangle type problem. The tree is off there to the right. I think if you find the angle next to the 30 degree angle this all falls into place. That's what I've always thought that's the that's the one angle you need to be able to find. So the two angles that make up a straight line have to be supplementary. So 180 minus 30 is 150. And then I add 50, 150 to 20 degrees, get 170, subtract that from 180, and I get 10 degrees. And now I have the angles I need to figure out the height of the tree. At this point, we have two choices. We can either find x or y. Either way, it's going to work. If you find x, then you're going to use the small right triangle to find the height of the tree. If you find y, you're going to use the large right triangle to find the height of the tree. So I went after x here, and I said the sine of 10 degrees over 40 is equal to the sine of 20 degrees over x. And you cross multiply, and you divide, and you get roughly 78.78 feet for x. So now I'm going to use the right triangle, that small right triangle, uh, with, that, with the value we just calculated to come up with the height of the tree. So the right triangle there, that small right triangle on the right, the tree is opposite of 30 degrees. The 78.78 is the hypotenuse, so we use sine. Sine of 30 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Multiply, and you get 39.4 feet for the tree. Had we found the y, we would have said the sine of 20 degrees was the tree over y, and we still would have gotten the exact same answer. Let's move on. 
Now here's one. I, I'm I'm going to set it up for you. I'm not going to solve the whole thing, but this is one of your homework problems. Um, and we had one similar to this in chapter six, only it used a right triangle that went over to one of the one of the uh, edges. Uh, and so the rectangular back box is shown here, the two by four by eight, and we want to find the angle theta formed by the diagonal of the base and the diagonal of the two by eight side. What you have to do on this one, this is really what you'll see on the homework, is you need to draw that back side and that third side of the triangle. And if you do that, you'll probably see um, that it is a two-dimensional triangle that's inside this that's inside this box. So I drew that back side there in, in red, and I labeled x, y, and z. This is a side, side, side problem. We have enough information to find x, y, and z because they're the diagonals of those rectangular uh, sides of this box. So x is the diagonal of the 4 by 8 side, y is the diagonal of the 2 by 8 side, and z is the diagonal of the 2 by 4 side. So we're going to do Pythagorean theorem three times, come up with x, y, and z, and then I'm going to let you be on your own. So x squared is equal to 4 squared plus 8 squared, and I worked that out, and x is the square root of 80 y squared is equal to 2 squared plus 8 squared. I work that out and I get y is square root of 68. And z is squared is 4 squared plus 2 squared. And z comes out to be the square root of 20. And that's enough information to knock this out because now you have all three sides of the triangle and you simply have to find theta. You'll use law of cosines. Now I want to tell you this. This is all the information I'm going to give you on this problem. But z is across from theta. And so you'll make sure they're across from each other in the equation as well. I think you can do this one. Let's move on to the next one. Well, here's the jogger problem. And, I, and the first thing I want to tell you is that there's only one jogger. And some students think for some reason there's a second jogger. I don't know if it's stock in the first one or what, but there's only one jogger in this situation. So the jogger runs a constant speed of one mile every eight minutes in the direction of south 30 degrees east for 24 minutes, and then changes direction north 15 degrees east for the next 16 minutes. And we want to determine to the nearest tenth of a mile um, how far are we from our start point. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to show you how you set it up and give you some values. And then I'm going to let you finish the rest of it on your own when you do your homework. So south 30 east, that's that first, the longer red line going down and to the right. And then we change direction. So you've got to set up a new coordinate system and go north 15 degrees east. And so that second smaller leg is there where we finished up on the right side. So now we've got to determine the distance between that point and our start point. Well, we need some angles and we need some lengths. And so south 30 degrees to the, or south 30 degrees to the east, if it's 30 degrees there, then it's going to be 30 degrees on the other side, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And then we went north 15 degrees to the east, and that was 15 degrees. And so we have 30 degrees and 15 degrees. So the angle between the two legs, D1 and D2, is going to be 45 degrees. Now, distance is rate times time. Our rate is one mile every eight minutes. And we went for 24 minutes on the first leg. So I end up with three miles. And my second leg, I was one mile for eight minutes. I times it by 16 minutes. And I ended up with two miles. And that's all I want to do for you. You're going to use that system basically here to determine the distances for D1 and D2. You'll use alt interiors plus the extra angle to figure out the angle between the two legs. And then you're off and running with the law of cosines. And I think you can finish this one up on your own. All right, let's give you some help on the baseball problem. A baseball diamond is just a square. It says that in the problem, by the way. And we need to find the distance between the pitcher's mound at first, second, and third. And each of the bases are 90 feet apart, and it's 60.5 feet from home plate to the pitcher's mound. The key to this one is it's a square. And in any rhombus, and square is basically a rhombus, diagonals bisect the vertex angles. And the pitcher's mound is on the diagonal from home to second. The pitcher's mound is not on the diagonal from first to third. So let me give you a quick drawing of this. I think that might help us. So here it is. Notice the pitcher's mound is on that diagonal from home to second. That diagonal bisects the angle down there at home. So we have a 45 degree angle on both sides of that diagonal. Uh, the pitcher's mound is not on the diagonal from first to third. It's a little bit south of that. And so we don't know the angle there at first and third. 
but there's enough information to do this. To find the distance from the pitchers mound to first, which would be the same as the pitchers mound to third, you'll use law of cosines. And you can find the distance from home to second because that diagonal splits that square into two right triangles. There's a right angle over there at first base. So you might want to ignore the line at this point from um, the pitcher's mound to first. Treat that as a right triangle, and I bet you can figure out the distance from the pitcher's mound to second. All right, let's do one more and wrap this up. Um, another problem you're going to have on the homework is a rhombus question. And for those of you who have forgotten about rhombus, a rhombus is a parallelogram. Uh, it's a unique one in the fact that it all four sides are the same length. It's not a square, though, because the angles are not... 90 degrees. A square is a rhombus, but a rhombus may not be a square. Uh, the key to the, they want to find the length of the two diagonals, and there's a short diagonal and a long diagonal, as there are in, in every parallelogram. Uh, they give you one of the angles, 50 degrees, and so I've marked that down there as 50 degrees, and the length of each of the sides is 60 centimeters. The key to this one is consecutive angles are supplementary, opposite angles are congruent, and I think if you get those angles in there, you can then use the law of cosine twice, and you can find the length of the two diagonals. The consecutive angles, the ones next to each other, are supplementary. Opposite ones are congruent, are equal to each other. And that's the only hint I'm going to give you on that one. Well, that wraps up rather a short lesson, lesson 27. Uh, get to work on the homework. If you have any questions or problems, get in and see your instructor and get some help on these. Uh, we've got all sorts of things to do to help you uh, be successful in this lesson get to work.